हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदिप वेलकम टू माय चैनल मूवमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स विद जो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग बिकॉज़ आई पोस्ट बायो मैकेनिक्स एंड लॉट ऑफ ऑर्थो रिलेटेड टॉपिक्स ओवर हियर ऑन दिस चैनल एंड आल्सो लॉट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन व्हिच यू कैन यूज इन योर क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस आल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेयर आई पोस्ट एमसीक्यूज एंड आल्सो पिक्चर्स ऑफ माय नोट्स द रेफरेंस टाइम फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विल बी मेंशन डाउन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन So without any further ado let's get started Before starting the topic I hope you guys have checked all the topics that I have covered in the ankle joint series so please check that out and then come to the ta- transverse tarsal joint so that you get a better understanding of the ankle foot complex So in the last video we saw the structure of the transverse tarsal joint right so this video will be about understanding the function and the axis around which the movement in the transverse tarsal joint takes place so in subtalar joint we saw that the axis was oblique and the movement that was occurring was a triplanar movement that was the movement was occurring in all the three planes that was supination and pronation now if you come to the transverse tarsal joint the movement is slightly more complicated than the subtalar joint it has two axes so the axis of transverse tarsal joint is divided into two axes or it is explained in two axes that is the longitudinal axis and the transverse axis in the longitudinal axis the movement of the foot is more of inversion and eversion whereas in the transverse axis the movement is more of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion that is upward and downward movement of the leg and also abduction and adduction So if you look at the longitudinal axis the axis is inclined from the transverse plane to 15 degree so if you take the leg over here this is your transverse plane so if you take the axis it is 15 degree inclined and then if you see from the top it is 9 degree in medial to the sagittal plane so this is your sagittal plane over here like this cutting the leg and from the sagittal plane the axis is 9 degree medial so it's inclined and medial so it's somewhat like this similar to the subtalar joint somewhere in that line and the main movement that occurs in this axis is the inversion and eversion right inversion and eversion of the transverse tarsal joint over here whereas the transverse axis is 52 degree inclined that is this is the transverse plane from the transverse plane it is 52 degree inclined and then in the sagittal plane it is 57 degree tilted medially so 57 and this it would be somewhere like this so this axis allows the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion movement and also abduction and adduction movement now coming to the function of the transverse tarsal joint it has two functions that is in non weight bearing and weight bearing if you see the non weight bearing it adds to the supination and pronation of the subtalar joint we saw that when the calcaneus moves for plantar flexion adduction and inversion that is this movement there is supination of the foot occurring at the subtalar joint and then the opposite is the pronation of the foot now this is added by the transverse talar joint what do i mean by added so the hind foot goes for some amount of supination so this supination is added by the movement of the transverse tarsal joint the foot goes for added supination with the transverse tarsal joint and same for the pronation now what happens in weight bearing in weight bearing it compensates the fore foot for hind foot position now what does this mean in weight bearing when your hind foot goes for supination or pronation the transverse tarsal joint will act differently according to the supination and pronation and this will affect the fore foot right so if you see over here when the hind foot goes for supination or pronation the transverse tarsal joint will go for a close pack or a loose pack so let's understand this properly by dividing it into supination and pronation so in supination you have to remember that when the hind foot goes for supination it is in a close pack position right and the close pack position locks the transverse tarsal joint let's see how this works now let's see what happens to the transverse tarsal joint when the hind foot goes for supination so supination will occur either when your tibia is rotating laterally that is if you are pivoting on your foot this is the medial part of the foot so when the tibia is rotating laterally or if there is a stone on the medial aspect of the foot because when the stone is on the medial aspect the calcaneum will go for inversion 
and there will be supination of the hind foot. So when your hind foot goes for supination, we saw that all the ligaments in the subtalar joint or the hind foot they get very tight, and along with that, the transverse tarsal joint will also be in a very close back position. That is, the navicule cannot move over here. Can you see that? Whereas in pronation, the navicule has more mobility. Whereas in supination, the navicule cannot move. So this will kind of get locked. That is, in supination, the transverse tarsal joint will get locked. and it will hamper the ability of the forefoot to go into pronation and get the foot back into neutral if the hind foot goes for supination over here the forefoot can go for pronation and get the foot back into neutral but this will be hampered by the navicule or the transverse tarsal joint when it is in supination because of the close back position of the joint now this again will vary that is if the stone is not too big and if there is limited inversion the hind foot will go for supination right but the supination won't be that much and along with that the transverse tarsal joint will also go for supination but the supination will not be the full supination so it will still have the mobility so sometimes your foot or the fore foot can again go to pronation and get the foot back into neutral whereas when the inversion increases that is if the stone is too big there will be increased inversion which will increase the supination in the subtalar joint and in turn will increase the supination at the transverse talar joint and this will totally lock the joint because of the taut ligaments and the bones packed closely together now this will not allow your fore foot to go into pronation and get the foot back into neutral so this is how a supinated foot will not allow the fore foot to go into pronation and get the foot back into neutral now when the hind foot goes for pronation the transverse tarsal joint is in the loose back position and hence it helps in the recovery of the fore foot now let's see how this happens so now let's see what happens to the transverse tarsal joint when the hind foot goes for pronation or when the leg is in pronation during a weight bearing situation okay so when we talk about pronation either there will be the stone on the lateral aspect of the foot so the calcaneum will go for eversion and hence the foot will collapse inward that is pronation of the foot or the pronation of the subtalar joint at first the second reason where foot can go for pronation is medial rotation of the tibia right so when you are weight bearing and the tibia goes for medial rotation the hind foot or the subtalar joint will go for pronation now the when the subtalar joint is going for pronation we saw that the transverse tarsal joint was in a loose back position or in general the subtalar joint along with the transverse tarsal joint are in loose back position so this will allow the fore foot to go for supination and get the foot back into the right position because the transverse tarsal joint over here has comparatively more, more mobility than compared to a supinated foot so i'll go again when the hind foot or the subtalar joint goes for pronation the transverse tarsal joint will be in a loose back position which will allow the fore foot to go for supination and maintain the foot in a neutral position right now a small concept i would like you guys to understand is how the subtalar joint and the transverse talar joint both of them work to keep the foot in neutral or how these joints play out in weight bearing so when your leg is in weight bearing and if there is a stone on the medial aspect your leg will go for supination right the subtalar joint will go for supination if this is a small stone there will be only some amount of supination and your transverse tarsal joint will also go for supination and you will be still weight bearing there will be no problem now when this supination increases that is it's even more what will happen is the transverse tarsal joint over here may try to compensate or may try to get your foot back into neutral position by going in opposite direction right so that is a function of the, the transverse tarsal joint that is it tries to get your foot back into normal position but when this stone is very big what will happen your subtalar joint will go for total supination this will be close back position and your transverse tarsal joint will be locked in this position because all the ligaments and other structures are holding it tight all together and it cannot compensate or it cannot get your foot back into 
pronation or to the neutral position that is relative pronation and what this will do is it will cause your whole foot to go for supination and in that scenario your lcl ligament or the lateral collateral ligament can be injured and that is called as a ankle sprain so some amount of supination there is no problem little bit more supination the transverse jo- the transverse tarsal joint can still come back but as the supination increases even more the transverse tarsal joint cannot help and your whole foot goes for supination and there is injury of the lateral collateral ligament now what will happen in pronation in pronation if there is a stone on the lateral side there will be some amount of pronation and still your foot can maintain that but once the pronation increases even more what will happen the transverse tarsal joint will be in a loose back position now over here your fore foot can supinate or the transverse tarsal joint will be loose or the navicule and the other bones over here will be loose enough to allow the fore foot to go for supination and get the foot back into neutral so that is the difference between these two right here the transverse tarsal joint cannot help your foot to get back into the neutral position whereas in pronation the transverse tarsal joint is comparatively in a loose back position so it helps in the recovery now let's summarize the topic we saw that the longitudinal and the transverse axis which is very different two axis in the same joint and we saw that the longitudinal axis they allow inversion and eversion movement whereas the transverse axis they allow plantar flexion dorsiflexion and also abduction and adduction up to some extent then we saw the function of the transverse tarsal joint that is it adds to the supination or pronation of the subtalar joint in non weight bearing whereas in weight bearing it compensates the fore foot for the hind foot position that is if it is in supination it will get locked like if it's a total supination it will get locked and there is nothing your fore foot can do to get your foot back into neutral position but if there is some amount of supination it still has a chance to come back to the neutral whereas in pronation what happens pronation it is in a comparatively loose back position so it allows your fore foot to go to supination and get your foot back into neutral that's why mostly we see more of ankle sprains on the lateral side compared to the medial side okay that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please hit the like button and share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe and also let me know in the comments what other videos you would like me to cover thank you for watching and see you soon in the next video